waiting for the long overdue healing spell I've been promising. That's coming up in just a moment. Hi guys, I'm Mel from Mel's Divination and today's Witchy Wednesday and I've been a little bit out of commission because I haven't been feeling well and I have been suffering with migraines. I've mentioned it on the channel multiple times now. So it's kind of gotten in the way of work and I've been promising for a while to do a healing spell to walk you guys through a very simple healing spell that I have that works that I've used multiple times and today I started to get another headache unfortunately it started to come back it's been I thought I was finally out of the woods but it's starting to come back a little bit so I decided this is a great time to share this with you guys because I need it for myself and it won't hurt to share so I have a lot of materials around me I know you can't really see that I am going to hold everything up a little at a time for you to 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 come walk through with me. I have already meditated on this energy to start the spell work. And I've also pulled cards divination to see if this was good, a good idea or not. It's always a good idea before you do spell work to do something similar to that. Use some kind of divination, check in with your guides to make sure that there's not going to be any kind of like major consequences. Now I am, I did get the book, the spell, excuse me, originally from this book. It is the good spell book. I've done a review on it. I've talked about this book before. I've done multiple spells with this book. And this is, it's like a base of the spell is what I did, how it, where it started. And then I've added multiple things for myself. Now I do want to be clear before I even get into the ingredients and things like that, this needs to be tweaked for however it fits you and what you have, okay? I have a lot of stuff that I'm using here, but it's stuff that I already have. It's not things that I ran out and bought, all right? I do want to be clear about that. So the base of the spell, like kind of like the standard foundation of it, it's in this book, it's on page 45, and it is called Another Way to Alleviate Illness is the name of it. There's one thing that talks a little bit about flicking water and things, but then the second part of the page talks about a different traditional remedy, and this is what we're going to focus on. Yet another traditional remedy uses candle magic. On a blue candle, I have a blue chime candle right here, use a pin, I have pins right here to inscribe moving from the base of the candle bottom of the candle to the tip the name of the person who is ill pierce the candle with the pin and leave it there let the candle burn down and extinguish itself and keep the pin for future spells that's all there is to it now i have gone above and beyond while doing this by adding a lot of extra stuff and I mix it up a lot of the time. Sometimes I do more, sometimes I do less. It really depends on what I have on hand and what I feel up to doing. But I can tell you every time it works. I've done it on myself. I've done it on the cat. I've done it on a friend who was having severe back pain and they did notice a difference. So I've done it on for across multiple times for multiple reasons and it it works every time I've done it, okay? Now, I'm gonna walk you through the ingredients that I have, and then we'll go through the, my, the process of what I do, all right? First of all, I have like a little candle holder for my chime candle, and I have a big container. This is glass, and I've used, you can see that there's stuff in it, but it's because I've used it, and wax has melted, and it's gotten stuck, and I just didn't feel like cleaning it because it was a healing spell that I used in this. I put this candle in the middle because, Chime candles, depending on where you get them from, can melt down over the holder and make a big mess. And I also like to surround the candle with herbs and such. So that's what this is all about. If you do it like this, make sure you get something that has thick glass that can handle heat because I can tell you I've done this 
many times on like a saucer or a ceramic plate and the plate cracks when the chime candle burns down. So heat proof, something that is heat proof. That's number one. Always use heat safety, fire safety when you're doing any kind of candle magic. Now I have oils. I have the Black Destroyer. This is from the Conjure Cardia. I always say it funny. I have a hard time saying that. Conjure Con Cardia. And this is basically an oil with black pepper. It has, I believe, um, juniper berry and a carrier oil. And I, and I don't know what else is in it. It's something that she makes and it, it, it removes, it destroys things, it breaks things. So I use that with the intent of like covering the candle. I also use sandalwood and thyme essential oils as well. And I use them to coat the candle. I do that after I do the inscription. So I'll show you that in just a minute. Now, as far as herbs, I have rue, which is a healing herb. I have nettle, which is a healing herb. I have cinnamon sticks, which will go in the bowl. I have bee pollen, which is known for healing. I have banishing powder, okay? I think that's everything I have around me. Oh, and I have salt, but that is to, for protection for the spell work, which I put around the bottom of the container. Now, I also have two sticks of incense, which I'm going to use to cleanse my material. I have peppermint and I have eucalyptus, which are both for healing properties, but you can use whatever incense works for you. And I have my, my spell work candle that I always use. Um, it, it's sandalwood and more. I've shared this with you guys before in other spell videos. I have a piece of wax paper down, but it's just because I'm going to be rolling the candle in the powder and in the herbs and I just want it to like co coat the candle in a good way. I also have a ginger candy because ginger speeds up spell work and I need this to go pretty quickly. So the first thing I'm going to do is light my incense because I need to cleanse things before I start working with it, okay? So I need to light my incense and I need to light my um, my candle, my, my spell work candle, not my chime candle. So I have two different incense holders. This one I just made myself with, uh, dry, air dry clay and paint. And I, and it doesn't always work. <laughs> it does not always like to work. Um, I do use a match when it comes to spell work as much as often as I can, just because it has more of a natural energy to it. So I'm lighting both sticks of incense. And then I'm lighting my sandalwood and myrrh candle. Okay, so that's where we're starting. And... So I have both of my sticks of incense and while I'm doing that, I'm going to cleanse my candle in the incense in both sets. One is definitely smokier than the other, but in both sets of incense, cleanse my candle holder in both sets and then cleanse my big container in both sets. And you can always use crystals too. I just didn't take any out for this, for this, for, for this spell. And then I, I'm going to cleanse my pin. It doesn't matter what color. And I'm also going to cleanse my mortar and pestle, which I'm going to grind the herbs up together for a, a, a nicer, finer thing. And that's it. That's all I do for cleansing. So I'm going to move these out of the way so they're not going to bother me because in, especially with a headache, incense can be a pain in the ass. So I'm just moving them off out of the way. All right. Now that I've done that, I'm going to take my ginger candy that I like. So ginger speeds up spell work. A lot of witches will chew on an actual piece of raw ginger. That's a little bit too spicy for me. So I actually have these hard candies. You can get them on Amazon. I'll link them down below. 
Now, where do I get my herbs? I buy most of my stuff from Mountain Rose Herbs, which I'm not an affiliate with, but I probably will be someday. They have really great organic herbs, but they sell them in bulk. So if I don't like see this rue, I don't have a lot. I don't need a lot of it. So I go to a local witch shop and buy them, buy the ones that I don't need a lot of um, in small portions. Okay. So now I'm going to inscribe, before I coat the candle with anything, I'm going to inscribe my name. I'm going to inscribe my date of birth, which is an extra step. It's not something you have to do. And I'm going to write on the, directly on the candle what I want to be removed, what I want to be healed, okay? I do my first and last name. So now I've done that, it's, I have my first and last name, my date of birth, and then the thing that I want it to heal. <clears throat> now I'm choking off <laughs> on my ginger candy. Now I'm going to work on the herbal part because I'm going, it's going to go pretty fast once the herbs are mixed. So I'm going to grind my herbs in my mortar. I'm going to add my, my herbs that I want to use in my mortar and pestle that I want to apply to the candle. And then I'm going to start applying everything with the oil. First herbs, then oil, then applying it all to the candle. I'm going to speed some of this up, fast forward it a little bit so you're not just staring at me, but I'm going to walk you through the herbs I'm doing first. And while I'm doing this, okay, I've done this in other spell work for you guys. I take whatever, I don't take a specific measurement. I take whatever the herb is. So this is rue. If I can get it open. There we go. And I take a little bit out. It's important to keep in mind that we're using a lot of herbs and we don't want to over do it with just one individual and then I charge it. I sit with it. I tell it what I want it to do. I thank it. I put it in the mortar and pestle and then I, I put all of them together and then I grind it all up and I do this with every single herb. So it's rue, nettle, bee pollen is what I'm using. Okay. Now, I'm just going to work on grinding this. I'm also going to fast forward this part so you guys can just see. This is what it looks like after being ground up. And then I'm going to focus, next I'm going to focus on the oils and applying them to the candle. Now we're starting on the oil, like I said. So we have the candle. We're going to do Black Destroyer. And we're going to move it. I got to double check the, the book because I can't remember what it said. Of course, I don't remember. Um, base to tip base to tip bottom to top and there's a reason you might be like Mel why everything has a reason that's part of spell work everything has an intention as I was saying we go from bottom to top and everything in spell work has a purpose has an intent and I believe we've talked about this before so all of the herbs have different types of healing properties. All of the oils have different purposes of healing properties, things of that nature. I am, okay, well, 
I can't get the sandalwood open, so we're not going to use sandalwood. Go with it. So yeah, sometimes, see, just like that, I couldn't get the sandalwood open, so we're jumping to time instead. Use what you have and research what their properties are. I'm just going to put this on the candle holder for a minute because the oil is definitely coming off of my fingers. That's why I have a paper towel right here and the color is getting coming off. Okay. Um, so now the next step is banishing oil, uh, banishing powder. Now I buy my banishing powder from Art of the Root. I find it to be very, very helpful because, and why banishing powder? Because we're trying to banish the illness. <laughs> So I am going to take the herbs I ground, I'm going to put them on my wax paper or at least some of them on my wax paper. And you can do this however it works for you. You do not have to do this exactly. And I'm going to add a little bit of my banishing powder into that. I don't need a ton and it is literally powder, powder like cornstarch powder. I don't know what they put in it. I don't know. Okay, and then whatever I don't use, I'm going to put in the bottom of this container, okay? So now I'm going to take the candle, and I'm actually going to roll it in the concoction of herbs and powder. And if you, put, if you use oil, even if you don't have a carrier oil, even if you don't have like essential oil like thyme or sandalwood or the black destroyer oil I, I mentioned, you can just use olive oil. You can just use vegetable oil. It does not have to be a fancy oil, whatever oil you have. So this is what it looks like now. And I'm sticking it in there and I need to wipe my fingers off again because the blue and the powder and everything does get stuck to you. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the rest of the powder that was in my in my uh, mortar and pestle, put that in the bottom of, of the container. I will also add like, often I'll use like birthday candles and I'll add additional like either white candles or blue candles. White is good for protection of the spell work. See the nice cleanup with the wax paper? So then I just move the herbs around in the bottom. And now we have salt. So I'm going to put the salt, but what I'm actually going to do before I do, I, I um, start lining the bottom with things is I want to clear a space for the candle to actually sit right in the middle because I'm going to put all the stuff around it now. So I have salt for protection and you can use spoons too. I have like a really, oh, I haven't opened this one. This is just sea salt, sea salt from Dollar Tree. I have another one somewhere that I, I this one must be a new one. So I'm just gonna pour it, literally pour it around the candle for protection because salt protects your spell work. Salt protects the energy and stops it from getting getting negative energy. You don't have to put as much as I did. It just came out a lot, so, and that's fine. I don't care. Okay, so there's that. And then I have, last but not least, a cinnamon stick that I'm going to break up. Now, cinnamon sticks do not, like, sit on the candle, so I'm just going to take one cinnamon stick and I'm going to break it in pieces you can get cinnamon sticks anywhere. You can get them at Dollar Tree, Christmas Tree, Job Lot, anywhere. So we're gonna, I'm gonna break what I can, pieces of the cinnamon stick. Sometimes cinnamon sticks don't break easily. So this has a big chunk, it's fine. It fits in my container and this one too. And I'm just going to add my energy to this Now, the number one ingredient is your intention, okay? Your intention is most important. If you don't 
tell everything what it's doing, what its purpose is. It doesn't know what to do. If you're not fusing things with your intent, then it doesn't know what to do. Then I have the pin. I don't know if you guys can see that. The pin. Remember, they said the, the spell said we have to put the pin through the candle. Okay. Oh no, I broke the candle. That doesn't usually happen. Okay. That should be okay. We'll see. Okay, so last but not least, am I forgetting anything? No. Nope. So the candle's ready, and I'm just going to light it, and that's that. Now, if you break your chime candle, it's fine, because you can melt it down, which I probably will do. We'll see what it does. Um... And get it to stick to itself but I'm just gonna see how it goes so that's it and then you light it and you let the rest do its work so we're done this is still my sandalwood and myrrh candle and um, I often will surround this with other candles for protection I just didn't do it for this purpose for this video and that is it. And then you sit and you keep your energy with it. You infuse it with your energy. As the candle burns down, your intent is to picture the illness is going away. Whatever, whoever's illness it is, it's going away. And you can work with Archangel Raphael. You can work with Archangel Michael. You can work with deities, whatever deities work for you. You can work, you whoever. Whoever, whatever, however, okay? Now, if you're doing this for a person and not for yourself, generally, I would say ask them. It's not going to harm them if you do it for them because it's kind of like, think of it like how Christians will say a prayer on, on behalf of somebody if they're ill. So it's not going to necessarily harm but if you're doing spell work for a person, you really should ask somebody, like, are you okay with this? I know a great spell. Are you okay with this? Practice it on yourself before you use it on anybody else also. But that's really it. I mean, you literally only need a blue candle and a pen. Really, is all you genuinely need. And you could even do it with, a, with I've done it before, with a birthday candle in a pinch when I when I needed to get it done really quickly. So you can make this as extravagant or as minimal as you want. You can add more herbs, you can add more oil, uh, you can add crystals, more candles, or you could just do a blue candle with a pen. It's absolutely your, this is what the fun part is of creation. I've gotten it down to a science for myself. What I shared with you has worked really well for me. Um, but I've also just used a blue a blue candle and a pin before. It really ju just depends on the vibe that I'm in. Sometimes I'll use eucalyptus, sometimes I won't, sometimes I'll use echinacea. It really all depends on the mood and what I have and how fast I have to get the spell work done. Now, when it comes to burning stuff with herbs on it, you really need to watch it. You need to keep it within eyesight. You need to watch out for pets, for kids, or things tipping over sometimes these candles so the last time I did this spell it was a different kind of chime candle and it was softer waxier and I had put a bunch of other candles around in this container and it actually melted softened the candle so much it started to droop I think I may have a picture that I can share with you guys that I saved from it and if I do I'll stick it in here so definitely be mindful I've actually had this is probably the most successful glass that I've had so far that I, and I got this from Dollar Tree. I had a bowl one before and I showed it on one of my Dollar Tree videos. It exploded when I did this spell because if you don't put a chime candle holder, when the chime candle burns down, if it's, if the fire, like a lot of times the, the herbs will catch on fire and the, the wick will continue to burn even if there's no more wax and it'll burn on the herbs and it gets really hot. And so I had one of those Dollar Tree bowls explode on me before and it was, I was sitting right there. So thankfully I was able to clean it up and thankfully it didn't explode to the point of where I got cut or anything. 
but be mindful when you do candle magic it can be dangerous there can be their oils and herbs are flammable so use with caution be wise about it keep an eye on it and you're pretty much good to go besides that i hope you guys enjoyed this comment if you liked it comment if you want me to do more simple spells like this if you've done anything like this by the way the color blue i don't think i mentioned it that's known as a healing color okay um I don't know if I told, if I said that at the beginning, but that's why it's blue. Why blue? Because blue is known as healing. Green can also be considered healing. Blue and green, or you could substitute white or black also for that. I wouldn't recommend anything else. Okay, guys, comment down below, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you on the next live and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.